welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. I'm your, uh, Chris. With me tonight is Jesse. Hello. Still shaking out the rust every once in a while here. <laughs> Every time we get this down, we take a break and then we have to come back to it. We apologize to our uh, five listeners to uh, – <laughs> It's all fresh every time. It's all fresh. Right, right. It's like it's a new start every it's time. It's always like the first time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we run nothing but a professional shop here at Six Strings of Things. <laughs> yeah, but professional what? I don't know. Right. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> So uh, we apologize to our listeners for taking yet another week off. It's one of those things where, you know, yeah, we do this part time and sometimes the yeah, spring the day job sprung. takes over. Yeah, and spring is sprung. And, you know, it's yeah, we, ha- we have no legitimate excuse. Uh, so, Jesse, uh, what have you been working on this week guitar wise? Uh, continuation of eight. Actually, I'm, I'm going backwards in time. So, uh, you know, it was 80 hair metal before and now I'm uh, back into like some Van Halen and uh, they have a – I don't want to call it a new album, but the one that came out, I guess, two years ago or something like that. There okay. Was, uh, yeah. So I heard little bits of that on uh, on YouTube and I think I might get that album because it's a lot better than anything. <laughs> the little bits that I heard were better than like the Hagar stuff. So it's like it's kind of like more attitude I I don't know. So we'll see how the whole album is. I have to get that. But anyway, so it kind of reminded me of Van Halen and – I was such a Van Halen head when I was a kid, you know, and, uh, and Randy Rhodes was my other big favorite. And, sure. uh, that just to kind of segue into a quick, uh, this date in guitar history, March 19th in 1982 was when Randy Rhodes was killed in a plane crash. So, you know, you saw oh. our black arm band on that day when I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. Awesome. Anyway. So how about you? Oh, uh, well, I have uh, been working on a couple of things and sort of to sum things up, I've been on a rhythm guitar kick as of for the last few weeks. And I'm not sure where this came from. No, actually, I do know where this came from. It came from us jamming together. And I'm like, oh, I'm so tired of being able to play only one thing when it's my turn to do rhythm. So I've been messing around with um, different things and. Uh, so I've been working on the Pride and Joy rhythm um, from Steve Ray Vaughan's song, which is really hard and probably harder than I can play. Um, but, you know, I think I'm about five bars into the introduction at this point, eh, maybe seven. But anyway, it's slow going and it's pretty tough. But I've also been working on um, harmonizing the major and minor scale. Hmm. And I had this book called Scales Over Chords that I got for a birthday present. I think it was last year or two years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got it because – or I asked for it because I wanted to be able to do more with my soloing other than just playing a pentatonic scale over whatever chords happen to be playing in the background. Right. Which a lot of a lot of, a lot of people start that way, right? So it's no sure. problem. Oh, yeah. Um, but you got to start somewhere. But – as I was starting to get through the book and it's talking about sort of how to use the notes in the chord that's being played and all that kind of stuff, I went and realized that, you know, I want to read the beginning of this book again real carefully. And as I did, it started talking about sort of um, harmonizing the major and minor scale, which I talked with my instructor about before, but it never really sank in. I think it might have been too early or I don't know. I don't know what it was or Maybe it's just one of the things you have to see multiple times for it to sink in. But sort of understanding now, okay, if you're going to do the major scale, that means you got the root, minor second, minor third, fourth, fifth, minor sixth, and diminished seventh. Mm-hmm. All right? That's your that's what you can play. And so you can almost treat that, I guess, I guess mentally the way I've been thinking about it is you can almost treat that like it's a um, set of chords that you can improvise with. Mm-hmm. if you will because they'll sound okay together and there are some combinations that sound better than others there's the you know some of the famous ones one four or five for example right sounds really good together you throw in a minor uh, second and that sounds good and all those things so i've been working on that and i've been working on um harmonizing the minor scale which would be uh root minor second my mi- uh flat third major third uh, minor fourth, minor fifth, flat major six, flat major seven, and the second's wrong. It's diminished second. Right. So it's root diminished second, and then flat uh, major third, minor four, minor five, flat major six, 
five, eight, or seven back to the root. Yep. And I've I've been sort of exploring with um, playing that too. Mostly in A gives me a chance to practice my bar chords. Of course. And um, I'm kind of liking the sound the uh, one, and then going to the flat major third, flat six, flat seven, mm-hmm. back to the root. I'm kind of liking that sort of sound as I've been messing around with uh, uh, rhythm and just, you know, just playing and trying to hear, okay, what what if I do this or what if I do that? And I actually don't know the diminished chords, so I do need to learn those at some point so I can throw in the diminished and see if I like those sounds at all. Yeah, when I first started with the, like the bar chords, like I just do a minor chord instead of the diminished. <laughs> you can't get away with it for a while. <laughs> yeah. And I thought about doing that too. I was like, nah, I should just, you know, actually learn those chords. Yeah, point. it's true. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, because I guess what I would like to be able to do at some point is um, just record my own music just for myself. Mm-hmm. Right. And so if I want to do that, I want to be able to play tracks and I want to be able to play different rhythms and I don't want to just play the 12 bar blues all the time. Right. And so that's what's gotten me into the book. And, you know, I got gung ho with the book and I think I'm on page five. Uh, because I got, I just stopped and parked on the idea of harmonizing the scales, and of course it's self-study, so there's no pace or anything like that. This is what's interesting right now, and trying to get that those chord changes under my fingers. Right. So have you uh, fired up GarageBand and uh, tried to lay down? Uh no. But what I have done is I've been using my iPhone um, voice memo. And oh, that's cool. Yeah. So real quick and easy, I can while I'm playing. On my app, don't have to have the computer with me or anything like that. I could just put the phone down, record maybe five or six bars. Yeah. And here, how does it sound? Am I hitting the chord changes right? And then, you know, if I'm not, where am I missing? And just trying to get the, you know, getting into the bar chord under my fingers, which I have, oddly enough, I'm comfortable with the seventh bar chords because I've been doing those since like, I don't know, the first month I've been playing guitar. Right. Right. I started that yeah. really early. I started with this book called um, Blues You Can Use by Robert, I think it's Ganapes, mm-hmm. John Ganapes. I can't remember. Uh, check it out, listeners, if you're interested in learning blues guitar. Uh, I got it, like, I don't know, first week I started playing guitar, and I just worked through the whole book, and it's been, it was really beneficial. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the better books. I, mean, I have a bunch of guitar books, and honestly, that one's probably the best. That's cool. Uh, yeah, because it, it, what it does is it walks through a little lesson, very short lesson, and it could be something as simple as like the minor pentatonic scale, one position, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's a study, which is a um, song, which uses that information in some way. Uh, and it's I, I don't know if it's something that they wrote or if it's some kind of longstanding blues instructional music. I have no idea, but each little thing, like there's a ninth chord blues on the section for ninth chords and... You know, there's a Delta Blues. You get these different styles going with the different things that are used in the lessons. Um, so anyway, uh, I, I started with that to get the bar chords down for the seventh chords. And so I've always been really comfortable with those, for you know, for the most part. But now getting the – strangely enough, it's the major chords. You know, the A major bar chord, no problem. But, you know, switching back to that E major bar chord and getting that bar and, you know, the fingers in the right place, I got to do that more. Yeah. I haven't done that as much as I should have. Yeah, it'll fall under there. I mean, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Plus, yeah sometimes it's funny because you get away from something a while, and, and it's just kind of like, meh. It's not yeah. as good as it used to be. <laughs> what right. happened there? You know, right? It's like and and it, the shape's there, but it's like okay, strings are buzzing. They shouldn't be buzzing or whatever. You know? Oh it's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and when you record yourself, um, that is uh, telling. <laughs> so what, what you're what you mean by telling is a sharp slap in the face sometimes <laughs> yeah it's like oh yeah listen to that string buzz or that, listen to that string ray i shouldn't have been going you know or yeah or that string's muted you can tell because the chord doesn't sound right and, yeah well you're so distracted when you're actually like concentrating on playing that things kind of in retrospect after you're done playing the phrase or whatever it's like okay i, I think that sounded good but boy, when you play it back, it's like, yeah, not quite ready for a record. <laughs> it's, yeah, exactly. It's very objective, right? I mean, it's, it, it is what it is. This is what you just played. And yep. you're right, because when you're playing, it's you're not thinking about it as much. Mm-hmm. You're focusing on the chord shapes or what notes you're going to play next, whatever the case might be, right? And when you record yourself, it's like, wow, I played oh, yeah. that. Yeah, it's, uh, it can be brutal. 
It's one of the best things. I mean, actually, it, no matter what level you are, and it doesn't matter whether you're like a beginner learning like the open chords on an acoustic guitar or uh, some jazz master who's like learning, you know, every permutation of what, whatever. Um, it, it, recording and playing back is is really one of the best things a person can do. And it doesn't, you don't even have to do it a lot. I mean, yeah, just throw well, it on there for five or 10 minutes and listen. Yeah, and using a smartphone is like the easiest way. So I got the loop pedal thinking, oh, I'll record myself more often. And I'm finding myself so lazy, like, oh my God, I got to pull the pedal out. I got to. <laughs> I got to get another cord, you know, I got to run the guitar into the pedal, pedal the cord. And then my, my pedal, you know, it has an external power. And so if, if my pedal is powered on the same power strip uh, or even the same outlet as my amp, it gets mm-hmm. weird feedback. So I have oh. to find another outlet, you know, and so it's, it's a pain. But it's so much but, work. Oh, it's so much work. <laughs> I, I, it's so ridiculously lazy. And, and so with the phone, it's, you know, it's literally open up the app. And press record. And probably I could ask Siri to do it for me. Like, I probably don't even have to actually open the app. I could probably, hey, Siri, you know, start the voice memo app. And, I, yeah, so there's probably one less button than I actually push. Anyway, um, it's there's, so there's no excuse to not record yourself. So, listeners, if you haven't thought about using your phone to record yourself, do it. It's uh, no matter what level you play at. it's You'll be very surprised, I think, at what you hear if you haven't done it much before. Oh, it's true. It's funny because when I was younger, every every show anymore is pretty much out when I was a kid. <laughs> but it's like, I mean, getting a boombox around to be able to like record and finding a cassette, uh-huh. <laughs> whatever, is like. Uh, and now, yeah, there's no depth of laziness to which we will not sink now that all this technology is here. Because like pretty much any iPod, any phone can do this kind of thing now. Oh, absolutely. Plus, you know, if you keep your repertoire um, on your phone, so as long as you're working on it or as long as you know how to play on your phone, then you always have them there with you. So, I mean, I thought it was sort of the height of convenience to take my iPad and hook it up to my amp. And now, like, I don't even have to do that. I can just hook my phone up to my amp. Done. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's, um, so, yeah, for the lazy, I tell you, the smartphones are uh, definitely definitely for the lazy. Oh, it'll, it'll work well. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, recording myself and, you know, at some point I'd like to have just a few songs that are just, you can say, hey, that's mine. You know, I can play that. And some of it will be blues, no doubt, but I also don't want to be basically having the variety of the songs that I record being what key I play in. Right. You know? <laughs> sure. I've, and in turn, um, you know, speaking of rhythm playing on top of all of this, I've been also checking out um, Justin, um, um, Justin Qatar's website. And that is really cool because he's got a blues lead and a blues rhythm Mm -hmm. um, lesson video series and talking about various, you know, alternatives to the 12 bar um, progression and all these cool things. And so, yeah, I mean, that's sort of uh, what I've been working on. Yeah, I got to go back to his site and uh, and redo some of those things and hit some that I haven't yet because I he's just got so many things on there. And I know I like the stuff that I've, you know, played with before. So, yeah, got to go back to Justin. Yeah, he's been posting a lot of licks and stuff like that, too. So I get um, I get notices on my phone from YouTube posting to people who have subscribed to. Mm-hmm. And uh, just today I got, like, you know, his uh, recent lick in the style of Freddie King. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so he does a bunch of these different lick series, which is uh, pretty cool. And, um, and, and, you know, definitely check them out. But I, I really find the instructional video series to be sort of very informative and very it keeps my attention it's easy to follow along with and it's a nice compliment usually to whatever i'm working on with my instructor Mm -hmm. yeah you know i can always find something and 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 we're working on and see what what's on justin's site as well to get to some little pointers in between lessons and stuff like that or or just to get a different take on things because then i go oh well that's a cool little progression or or whatnot oh definitely or you know if if not that you ever get frustrated with your lessons, but if you ever get like, God, I got to get away from this for a little bit, but I don't want to stop playing guitar. <laughs> right. It's, it's good to just go pick something else up. I, I, I really like the lessons. I get a lot out of them, but I also like the accountability. Yeah. Yeah, that's that true. Keeps me, yeah. It keeps me motivated in playing because I, I play just about every day. Mm-hmm. You know. And, You're so good. <laughs> well, no, I'm not. That's the problem. You know, like I, I'm coming up on four years and I don't think I sound like a four year guitarist. But, uh, um, yeah, the I, I'm accountable for my lessons. And it also I'm paying. <laughs> right. 
It's right. like joining a gym, you know? It's like, well, I'm yes. paying the money. I got to go. <laughs> right. Right. Of course, you know, a lot of people that join the gym just, like, pay the money and don't go. But so I try not to be, like, that guy with the lessons, right? right. You know, the guy that, you know, is working on it and putting effort in. Because if you're not putting the effort in, why do you bother paying? That's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So. So, yeah, Rhythm Guitar. Uh, I also need to find another song, I think, to start working on other than Pride and Joy. Not that I want to give up on Pride and Joy, but, man, Stevie's hard. Yeah, he has a very non-intuitive rhythm hand. Yeah. And, well, and the way it works with the – we talked about this a little bit before. Him and Jimmy both, actually, (laughs) are just uh, non-standard. And uh, it's hard. (laughs) Hard to just – to get it, you know, to sit in there. It's that Texas shuffle where, you know, yeah. you, you come up on those top three strings with every upstroke, but then you mute it yeah. real quick. And there's times where he does hammer-ons mm-hmm. where, you know, on the upstroke, he's doing hammer on So he has this quick, sharp sound and then a quick mute with the hammer-on, which is just amazing um, to, to how he pulled that off. And oh, yeah. It sound good. And it's why it sounds the way it does. And, it, you know, and with his notes, too. I mean, his single notes are often – a smoosh of of a rake of notes that lead into it. It's just like, it sounds so cool. You know, it's not the note, but it's the sound. I did go ahead though. And I, I don't think I mentioned this in the last show. And I went ahead and set up one of my guitars to be, uh, in one half step down. Me too. So, right? no, no, did you? I, I did. Uh, yeah. So I did the, the blue guitar, the, the Pacifico. Which one did you do? The blue, I have a blue sort of a budget uh, Parker import. Mm-hmm. Because it has a whammy. You, you got to have a whammy. Oh, yeah, sure, <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, if I ever used mine, I'd, I'd put mine on. But, uh, yeah, what I what I need to do, and this is a lesson that I learned, is that I need to put new strings on it. Yeah, a little thicker. Because, yeah, well, not, not really any thicker because I already have tens on them. I think the tens are going to be okay. The problem is these strings are kind of old. I think these strings oh. have been on for – well, dare I say, a couple of years. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's about well, time. <laughs> well, it's been in Robert's basement for like the last two years. And so I don't think I've, you know, changed the string since then. And so it, they've been stretched at a higher tension for a long time. Mm-hmm. So if you try to tune it down, you know, they're just not going to keep that tuning as well. It's been sort of been my experience. Yeah. So I think the tens are going to be fine. Um, and then I'm going to, at some point, I know I'll keep saying this, but I'm going to set up my homemade telly with uh probably tens or elevens and tune it down to D. Yeah. D or G. I haven't decided which probably D because there's a bunch of blues songs in D that I want to work on. Mm -hmm. Not the least being, uh, it hurts me too. Yeah. So, but I just don't think the nines are going to, I was messing around with it earlier and the nines just weren't sounding very good in D. Yeah. Um, just not working. D is nice. I like I like tuning the acoustic guitar, just the lowest string down to D, and you can hit that like open D chord, and it just has that nice full, you know, yeah, awesome sound. And acoustic makes the whole thing vibrate in a different way. Yeah, which is cool. Yeah, no, it's a great sound. I know I love open G sound as well, but there's only one song I know in open G. Of course, I could learn others, yeah. but um, it would be convenient to have one. But I just don't want to have like. You know, I don't want to get too many of my guitars away from standard. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I need like I need three more guitars before I start to devote something to G. You know, like you're working on that. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah, but that I didn't grow up like really as a blues player. So I mean, the open tunings uh, or even too much of a blues influence player. So like uh, I know there's some Stone stuff that Keith does things in open G, open D, yep. various things. Um, and, but I was never into that stuff, so I really never got into the open tunings. That's something I should play with, actually, in my old age. So it's what I I want to do it with slide. Yeah, oh, so well, it makes a lot much, of sense with slide, definitely. Yeah, pretty much everything I want to work on that's in an open tuning is in slide. Yeah, uh, it was a slide. So it, you know, uh, it hurts me too. Dust my room. Uh, I mean, I, there's a way you can play dust my room without it being. It, actually, you can do it with a uh, standard tuning, and it sounds pretty good. Uh, without a slide, but I think it sounds best with slide. Anything but Elmore James. I mean, he was like the king of slide guitar, and yeah. uh, I think a lot of his stuff was a, is an open D. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the cool stuff. At least I want to play. Yeah. So. So well, no update really on the guitar. I, I did take the uh, the baby into Sean. <laughs> uh-huh. so Sean Farley has my guitar. Um, although I I need to um, ask him if he's come up with anything. What we decided was. Um, 
the Floyd Rose nut is not going to work. <laughs> so okay. it's just not going to work. Uh, so he's looking for a roller nut type of thing. So for those who don't know about that, it's uh, essentially a, a metal nut that has little rollers uh, that each string passes over so that they don't bind in the slot. Um, and there are uh, versions for fenders that, that are out there. There's a few different versions. Uh, the Gibson-esque sort of uh, nut is harder to find that way. Uh, I think Mighty might, might, make, might make one, but it's hard to find. So um, I'm not sure if we're going to go that way. I may just get like a graphite sort of nut and say, get one of them, cut it to the right size, and let's go with a regular locking mechanism behind that mm-hmm. um, like it was before. But I think, you know, with the nut with the right height and cut right, it should be fine. We will see. But I'm about ready to give up on the on the roller thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um that's another thing about going to open D with the slide with the telly. That guitar has a nut that's probably too high, because I don't think I sanded it down properly. Mm. When I got well, that out of the kit. Yeah. So well, that'll be perfect, yeah. 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 Of course, you could always get one of those extender nuts that are for, uh, you ever see those things? Sort of a little pyramid shaped thing or triangular shaped thing that just really raises the strings very high. Huh. Yeah. yeah. So more for like a lap steel type of feel, I guess. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. So, guitar adventures, what can I say? I know. <laughs> the no. money pit. <laughs> It's it's not like you know, the, and I think every player that's listening right now or still listening to our show um, can I uh, sort relate to is that you start off by saying I want to play, mm-hmm. right? I want to play guitar, and then you buy you know a nicer guitar, and then you're like you know there's these different string gauges, mm-hmm. and then so you put strings on, and all of a sudden the bridge is lifted up if you've got like the sort of you know, the whammy bridge or whatever. So then you have to take the back apart and tighten down the screws. And then all of a sudden you start thinking about, let me put some new pickups in or maybe not, or how do I change the action? And all of a sudden, you know, this hobby of, I just want to play becomes, I have to spend so much time maintaining too, or tweaking (laughs) or, or, you know, yeah. Or you you keep your practice routine, what it is. And it just takes up more of your life. uh, Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's kind of like there are people who – I'm a tinkerer, putterer kind of person, you know? It's like this is my version of the guy who just dorks around in his garage with the hood open all the time, you know? Right. I mean it's not really about driving or – it's just about – so I think probably a good half of the time that I spend around or my guitars are not actually playing or practicing. They're – dorking about with it in some other way. <laughs> I don't play guitar. I just guitar. <laughs> I, just guitar right? I, just, I just tweak them. But, <laughs> and then pluck them a couple times. And like, oh, I like that sound. And then they move on to the next one. Or, oh, I don't like that. I think I'll raise the action a little bit or lower the action a little bit. Or, yeah. yeah. Or mess with this. Or, yeah. It's, uh, I have to work it's, on that, that playing ratio. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's an interesting hobby. That the, the way it sucks you in is uh, is, is interesting. Uh, but maybe other hobbies like that too. I don't know. If like you're you know into archery, maybe you start to make your own bows or something. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I knew I used to when I used to shoot uh, traditional archery. I knew a lot of guys that made their own bows and arrows and stuff, and I never got that far into it. Yeah. Um, but I've certainly gotten about that deep on guitar. Um, <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah. It's like a black hole. It just sucks you right in. So, uh, well, uh, I guess that's probably about all we have this week, unless you have anything else you'd like to add. That'll do. That'll do. All right. So remember, boys and girls, just keep picking and grinning. Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure is a production of Jester Cat Studios. You can see more about this and all other Jester Cat shows at JesterCat.com. You can also email the show at SST at JesterCat.com or continue the conversation on Twitter at SST Show. You can follow Robert at RS Macy, Jesse at Jester 700, and Chris at CW Culp. Thanks to Jesse for playing and recording our intro music. 